Okay, there we go. Recording has started. All right, welcome everybody to a Fanatics Friday afternoon. Um, we're going to do a little bit of lunch and learn today or happy hour, if you're like me. Cheers. But in any case, uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to cover. Uh, got a really cool demo. we got a really cool demo coming up um, here from Eric and from Stefan from Data Feeder. But I uh, just wanted to give everybody some reminders on stuff we've got that's coming up. Um, obviously, if you're watching sports, big story right now is March Madness. Um, this weekend, we've got the Sweet 16 boiling down to the Elite Eight. Um, next big opportunity is going to be with the Final Four, and then we've got another week plus until the uh, championship game. So uh, championship games, always big for NCAA. So uh, if you've got teams that are in the mix or if you just got general sports traffic, not a bad idea to uh, keep your eye on things and uh, be ready to act on that. Um, also, Major League Baseball, getting really close. I'm getting close to the season kicking off. Um, big opportunity if you've got Dodgers traffic, uh, gold collection is going to be uh, coming out during that first that first homestand. Um, that's the, the special edition uh, gold accented uniforms um, that the uh, World Series winner wears in the first homestand of the season. That's going to be an MLB shop exclusive for uh, the first few days. So if you want to promote that, make sure you're in the MLB shop program. Um, easiest way to do that if you're not there already is just to chat one of us up and say, hey, could you guys um, send me over an invite for the MLB shop program and we'll go ahead and send you over an offer and get you started there. Um, so that is that. Um, got a really cool guest today um, that is going to be showing off some cool tools uh, that people can use to uh, get into the product data feed. Um, products called Data Feeder and Eric is going to be driving. So Eric, you can share your screen whenever you like. Yeah. Um, and Eric and Stefan from Data Feeder, I've known these guys for years. We've actually got a demo up on the uh, um, our Fanatics YouTube page that guy, I think it's been there for like eight years from like many, many generations ago. But um, really cool tool for unlocking the power of product um, on your site. So uh, Eric, if you want to kind of introduce yourself a little bit, tell people what Data Feeder is all about, then you can Jump into the demo. One last note, um, we are giving away a free three-month subscription to Data Feeder. So if you would like to enter that, Emma is going to chat or going to drop a link to the Google form in chat, put your name and your email address and your site name in there, and then we will spin the wheel of fun at the end of this thing and we'll give away a free three-month three month subscription. Um, also, if you are not the lucky winner, um, we do have a code um, that you can use. I think it's Fanatics30 um, that you can use for 30% off any of the data feeder packages just for being a Fanatics affiliate. So, um, Eric, if Stefan's joined, I don't know if he's joined yet, but yeah, if Eric, sure. you want to drive, it's all you. Yeah, man. sure. Right on. Thanks, Wade. Thanks for having us. And um, thanks for everyone coming by. Um, yeah, so my name is Eric. Um, we started data feeder about 2008. And um, basically, in a nutshell, we just make it super easy to import affiliate products into an WooCommerce installation on WordPress. Um, currently, we have about 700 million affiliate products in our database from about 36 affiliate networks and roughly 20,000 um, merchants. And so today, I just want to give you a quick run through of how you can import some products from some of Wade's uh, properties into a WordPress site. And I'm gonna just start from scratch just so you can kind of see it um, take shape right from the beginning. Um, it's pretty simple. And um, if you have questions, just let me know. Um, if they pop up in the chat, I'm not sure I can see that, but if you have audio, I'll be able to hear and answer your questions. So um, yeah, let's begin. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, got it. Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm literally going to start from a fresh install, and I promise it won't take long. This is a plugin for WordPress? That's correct. Yep, it's a plugin. It's in the uh, repo. And uh, I'm nervous, and so I can't type very well. But we'll just get started. All right, so we've got WordPress installed. And I'm just going to configure two different things just to get my um, get my time zone set up, and then 
I just want to set up permalinks and then we'll be off to the races. And close name. All right, we're good to go. So now we just have a, uh, just an ugly <laughs> WordPress install. So the first thing I want to do is install WooCommerce. Um, oops, I meant to delete all that. Anyway, those are, these are uh, the plugins that are already installed, but they're not activated. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, activate the WooCommerce plugin. WooCommerce is free if you're not familiar with it. WooCommerce is an e-commerce plugin um, for WordPress, and it was purchased by Automatic, the company that runs WordPress. It was purchased by them a number of years ago, so it's super actively developed. I'm going to skip the uh, store setup details because it takes forever. We can just go a much faster way. We can just go into uh, the status page here, click tools, and then we can create our default WooCommerce pages. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just configure my currency to be US dollar. Okay. So now we have WooCommerce installed and it's configured at least enough for our needs. I will go back to um, plugins. And then I'm just going to activate this, these three data feeder plugins for now. So that's the data feeder API plugin, which basically allows you to um, uh, choose which affiliate networks and which merchants you want to uh, use with your site and also into your affiliate IDs as well as any API keys that you might have. Data feeder product sets, we'll get into that. And then the data feeder WooCommerce importer just basically is the connection between data feeder and, um, and WooCommerce. So I'm just going to activate those. And so now I just need to get my data feeder API keys. These are what you actually, when you subscribe to data feeder, you'll get a pair of API keys that you can just use on any site you want. So once you have a set of API keys, you can use them on unlimited sites. So if you have 50 WordPress sites, you can just use your keys on all of them. So that's that. So we've entered there. So now we have access to all the uh, net, uh, affiliate networks on the networks page here. So Fanatics and um, is an impact. And I'm just going to grab my affiliate ID here. Yeah. And enter that. So now the last thing I need to do here is just select the merchants that I want to um, uh, import into my site. Right now, just um, when we get started, I'm just going to do Fanatics, but then I'm going to add some other merchants here in a couple of minutes. So we'll do Fanatics, but you can see we have over 300 merchants available just from um, Impact US. So that's it. So now, um, uh, let's see. Yeah. So those merchants, I mean, we only want to have the ones that we are actually uh, approved for on Impact or whatever, right? Yeah, that's right. So you don't want to um, select uh, merchants you're not okay. approved for. However, if you do have an active account with like Skimlinks or Vigilink, you could do a workaround that way. Okay. All right, so what I decided to do for this demo um, is to create a little store for knit hats around football teams. Um, so let's do that. So I'm going to create a product set. And so basically a product set is where you can search for the products um, and then uh, basically save your search so that you don't have to search for the products again your store will automatically be updated with the new new products that come out. It'll automatically remove products that are no longer available for sale and then update any existing products that you have on your site. So the prices will get updated. If the affiliate link changes, that'll get updated. So what I'm going to do is just do some uh, knit hats. I'm just going to give this a name. And, oops.
I'm just going to be kind of uh, broad with this search and just kind of see what we get back here. And so I'll click search. And we can see that we have already, um, let's see, about 74 knit hats coming through. And I like the look of most of those. However, I do want to get rid of the set here. And then I also want to exclude, I think I saw some kids hats in here. I just want to exclude those. Yeah, so we can exclude um, those toddler hats. So what I can do is actually just type in like a negative symbol here. I'll make that a little bit bigger. I can just type in negative and um, set because I don't want any sets. And then I can also do uh, girls because I saw a girls hat in there. I could also do boys if I wanted to do that as well. So I'm going to update my search. And you can see we're down to 68. And so those are all the um, knit hats. So um, yeah, so the next thing we want to do is associate with those with a WooCommerce uh, store category. So what I can do here in the right-hand side, make that bigger, there we go, is I can just add a new category. And I'm actually going to have a parent category. So I'm going to have this parent category called knit hats. And then I'm actually going to have a subcategory um, for the uh, New England Patriots. So grab that. Make that a subcategory and make that, add that there. All right. So and we've done everything. So now all I need to do is I've got this search here set up and I can click uh, add a save search. And basically what that does is says, okay, we're going to import these 68 products because that's what we found now. But in a week or two or three weeks or a year from now, this pro all these products are going to change. But as long as the products match the search that you have here, those products are going to, new products are going to be added to this list. And if these products fall out of inventory, they'll just be removed from this list. Um, does that make sense? <laughs> I always have a hard time explaining this one. All right, um, so then um, once I'm ready and have that all set up, I can just hit publish. And so what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and start importing those products. Um, now it's set up to, to kind of trigger every one minute, but I'm just going to set it to every 10 seconds to speed up the process here. And if we go back here, we can see that now it's kind of started already. It's about 40% complete. So what we can do is we can create another one similar to this. And in this case, um, I promise Wade, this was actually in my, uh, in my plan was to do the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right. <clears throat> so we can do the same thing. And I'll show you how to kind of streamline this in a second. I'm going to, well, we'll just leave those out for now. So we'll do a search and see what our results are. And they're looking pretty good. Um, not sure if I want to exclude any just yet. I'm going to exclude the set uh, for infant because I don't want an infant stuff in here. And then I'm going to exclude a set. So if I, again, put in a negative signal, uh, symbol, and set, click search again, uh, we'll, we're down to 55 products. And we've re re removed those products that we didn't want. So again, I can just click add save as uh, save the search. And then I can also add a new category here called uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. So that's it. Um, so now we'll have these products starting to be imported into the site. This one should start uh, momentarily. Um, to make this a little bit easier, though, instead of typing the stuff each and every time, you could actually, um, there's a plugin that uh, is available that I have installed it's called Improve Save Button. And you can actually use that to then quickly duplicate this product set and create multiple product sets super fast. So if we did that, I'll do one more. Um, we can just duplicate this. Now we've duplicated the Jacksonville one. And I will do 
Broncos. And you get the idea. So now we've really saved a lot of time for setting up that. Um, yep, I'm moving too fast for myself. We've saved a lot of time for setting this up. Um, here I'm going to actually remove this one for toddler and see if there's anything else I want to remove. No, nope, that's it. So I'll just type in um, infant, and this is the pipe symbol, it kind of means or, so it's like not infant or set or um, toddler. And then out, that should have removed that big bright pink one. So that's all there is to it for that. Um, you can do a lot more stuff with the product search form. There's a whole lot of filters you can use, and I will get to those in just a sec. So I'm going to update the product search and then publish this. And so let's go. So that's already updating. Um, let's go take a look at the website. And I hate this theme, so let's fix that. Um, so I have this storefront theme. This theme is uh, distributed by WooCommerce. It's a free uh, theme um, that you can use, written by the WooCommerce guys. So um, I sometimes use that, but there are like most popular themes these days support WooCommerce. So you can use any theme that you like. Most of them already support uh, WooCommerce itself. All right, so let's see how that looks. That looks better. The images will be coming down. They don't get imported immediately. They will they get imported um, shortly after. And we can see that they are. Do they get imported into your media? Yeah, exactly. Uh, There's already, yeah. So here's the ones that have been uh, imported so far and they get imported into your media library. And when, if like, let's say they're out of stock, they're discontinued, they get deleted or is that something? Yeah, that to that's a really good question. Um, so by default, when you're working with a WordPress w uh, website, if you have a, a blog post or a product that has a featured image and you delete that post or you delete that product, um, it, it, the media associated with that post or that product is not deleted. However, that's why um, this is our docs, um, the data feeder documentation. We have, uh, we recommend to install this DX uh, delete attached media plugin. Uh, it's really, and it's super simple. All it, do, all it does is when you delete the product, when the product is removed from your trash and permanently deleted, the images go with it as well. So it helps keep your site uh, slim. So right now we got uh, now we're up to 73 images. So we got about half the images imported so far. Um, any other questions? Yeah, just to make sure, this is only for WooCommerce, right? Yeah, correct. It's only for WooCommerce. Okay. I'm not a WooCommerce fanatic. See what I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other the other question I would have is: Are are customers going to buy that product through? WooCommerce, my site, or Fanatics, their site? Yeah, they're going to buy it through Fanatics. So um, so if you click on through to the product and then click buy now, it's actually redirected with your affiliate link right over to Fanatics. I see. Okay. Um, and that's mostly because there's no way to do like a, sh a, a shopping cart with, with products from, especially with you, when you have multiple merchants, if you have something from Fanatics and then something from Lids, et cetera. All right, so um, I'll get to the front end and kind of style that up a little bit because it doesn't look that great. But I wanted to show you what we can do when we, if we want to add some other merchants to our system. I know Wade also uh, works with, um, let's see, who was it? Oh, uh, Fans Edge, as well as yeah, Lids. Lids. So we'll just go with those for now. So now we've got three merchants selected that we're going to uh, work with. And if we go into our product sets, and we'll go into maybe the, the first one we started with here. So now when we added it originally, it was 68 products, but now it's actually, since we added more merchants to our selection, we're actually getting 207 
uh, back. But I don't want to have, there are some, I, I, because I've done this, I've practiced the search, there are a number of duplicates in here. And I want to exclude the duplicates. And so we just have one of each. And I want the lowest priced one to be imported. And so what I can do here is I can sort them by the final price ascending. So that means we'll have the cheapest price, uh, the, the cheapest product coming in. And I'm also going to exclude uh, the products by a description. So if they have the same, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so if they have the same description, um, we'll just get one, or if they have the same U UPC value, we'll just get one back. We won't get them all back. So if you watch, we currently have 207 products. And if I update the search here, now we're back down to 61. So we're pulling products in from Fans Edge um, and Fanatics and possibly Lids. Good check. Yeah, and Lids. So we have a nice mix of products here. And so once I've updated this, um, I just need to update my search. And then that will uh, update the products on your site the next time your product set is kind of updated. Um, just a really quick thing I wanted to show you. Um, if you run, like, if you want to display just products that are on sale, you can just come in here and say, just show me, oops, just show me products which are on sale. And then now we have these products which are on sale. You can also do cool things like, okay, well, yeah, show me products that are on sale, but which have a, a discount of greater than or equal to 25%. And most of those do, so we could even try 50% and, and see what we can find. So yeah, so there's just one product that's coming in at 55%. So this search is actually searching across all of the merchants that you've selected. And you could also select merchants from other affiliate networks, not just Impact, but Commission Junction or Rakuten, um, ShareASale, et cetera. Okay, so I'm just going to update this um, search and then uh, bump the product set so it starts uh, re-importing whatever new products were um, added to this list. And um, does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, so that's updating. And I'm just gonna go and update these last two product sets to have the same information because now we have 165 products. Um, and what do we have? We had exclude by and we had a sort file price sending. And so we had 55 and now, yeah. So we'll just update that and bump that. And I'll do the last one to Denver. Now, um, we're still going to give the customer an option to purchase from all three of those uh, merchants, even though we're not displaying all three of their the, all of their products in our store. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. All right. All right. So now we have an awesome selection of products in our store and I just want to kind of get the store cleaned up just a touch to give you a sense of what you can do with it. Um, you don't need any of these. Uh, you don't need a cart. You don't need a checkout. You don't need a my account page. I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm just going to throw this in the trash. And so now it cleans up our menu just a bit. Um, another thing I want to do is quickly get rid of this cart thing here. All themes are different. This theme, there was no, it, it just kind of shows up by default. Um, and so I just wrote this little snippet of like CSS code that just hides it. As you can see, it's gone. Um, and then the other thing I want to do is get rid of all these things from the sidebar and add our own widgets to here. Oh man, I, I forgot one step. <laughs> That's all right. We will deal with that in a sec. All right. 
So the first thing I want to do is add the product categories. And that'll add this here. And we can do show product counts and hide, it, hide the empty categories. So now we have a nice list of categories there. Um, the one thing I wanted to do, and I forgot to set it up, but I will do it now, and then we'll just wait for the product sets to update, um, is I wanted to set up a, a, um, a way for the user to filter the products by either the merchant or filter the products by uh, the brand. So WooCommerce has a thing called attributes that you can use to do that. And so I usually enter these three in, so network, merchant, and brand. And um, I will show you what to do with those in just a sec. I should have done that a little bit earlier, but um, no worries. We will, what I'm gonna do is just bump these so they update really fast. And while we're doing that, the one thing, why is that showing one? Oops, forgot to remove that. All right, there we go. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you was go back to my store and go into Denver. Okay, so that's how your product uh, is gonna be displayed. You have the description here. Uh, you have the buy link, which will take you right over to Fans Edge. And, but like I said, we have products, we have this product from Fanatics, Lid, Lids, and Fans Edge. But right now our store is only uh, basically displaying it from Fans Edge. So this is where you can use a price comparison set to display the prices from multiple merchants for a single product. So I'm gonna go into the back end here. I'm just gonna bump that actually. And I had one other plugin I wanted to show you, and that was the comparison sets plugin. So this basically also hooks into the networks and the merchants you've selected. And to set this up, we basically just need to go in here and uh, toggle on the WooCommerce integration. And this is really cool. So now when we go back to um, this hat and I reload the page, now we're trying to find the best prices and here it's listed the prices from those three merchants. So it looks at, looks at various product details to try to figure out, to try to find the matches. And here it, it looked at the name and, and found also the UPC, the barcode, and it was able to create this price comparison set um, based on you know, the main product up here. And so that, you click through, we'll go to Fans Edge or Lids, and all three of those links will have your affiliate ID in them. And so you'll get credit for all those sales. Um, let's see how our store is doing. Okay, so we're updating one last one right now. And right. So now the last thing I want to show you um, was related to the uh, brands and merchants. We can ignore the network for now. But as you can see, um, we have the brands coming in. We have one from 47, we have Fanatics branded, New Era, Outer Stuff, and then we have um, this one, which is our merchant filter. What we can do is if we come back to our shop, I want to stick some filters here in the sidebar so I can customize here. What you can do in the sidebar is you can add a price filter. And that just comes with um, WooCommerce right out of the box. And you can also filter products by attribute. So if I want to have a merchant filter, I can select that and I can also have a brand filter and I will show you those now. So now those are over here. So right now we're on our shop's main page and this is listing all 100, 164 products from all the categories. And from here I can actually just drill down and say, well, I just want to see stuff from Fans Edge and you can click that. 
and you'll just see stuff from Fans Edge. Or you can drill down and just say, oh, I just want to see New Era stuff. And you can drill down, or you can, oh, just New Era stuff from Lids. And that's what you'll get. So you get a super powerful um, uh, filter search. I'm not sure where my price filter went. Let's see where that went. And, all right. Not sure why that's not showing up. I don't know. That's strange. Anyway, I don't know why that's not showing up, but it's not. So anyway, that'll give you a good sense of um, what your category pages could look like. And like I said, this will work for like any theme that you want to choose, like that supports WooCommerce. I know this is a super boring theme, but it's it's at least not as ugly as the default WordPress theme um, for a store. Um, so yeah, um, and if we go back to our back end, we can actually go into the product sections. We can see we have all the products back here, um, and then we have all of that media brought in to our site. So yeah, that's a quick overview. Um, oh yeah, and then all of these should have their comparison sets, price comparison sets set up um, for each product that's in your store. Yeah, cool. Oh, and then from here you can actually see like what merchant, what brand, so yeah. That was what I wanted to show you today. Um, did anyone have any questions? I know it kind of went pretty fast. The sound of minds that were blown. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like a real powerful product to bring a bunch of products together for people who are, like in our case, Texas. I mean, they're all about Texas, but um, yeah, this is so sort of fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, like I said, the product's been around forever. I mean, it's been around since 2008. So you guys have been iterating and, and really getting things dialed in and relatively recently updated because i know we were waiting until you guys got your last round done before uh we did the uh the session here so um you know definitely thanks for for jumping in and sharing that does anybody have any questions that they want to ask yeah, Paul better I, Go ahead. I have i have one one question um yeah. what does this run a month before i commit to doing because i'd have to set up woocommerce and then this and it looks great um yeah. but, but what's 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 the normal normal cost per month um, for data feeder, uh, it starts at thirty nine ninety five. Or okay. sorry, thirty nine. And um, but uh, Wade has a discount code, right? Yep. Which yeah, we got a discount to, code. Which you would Th get you that off. discount for the yeah thirty percent off for the lifetime of your uh, plan. So whatever okay. that turns out to be. Okay. Thank yeah. you. I, I mean, it looks worth the money. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm oh not no, no, to, I'm not. <laughs> I just, you know, I've got to. I've got to balance the uh, the ROI on it. So thank you. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep, totally. And like we usually tell, you know, if if people want to get started with this method, like, and they're like literally just building their WordPress site today, I would say don't sign up for Data Feeder today. Um, sign up when you actually have your site set up. You have some content written, maybe you've got some traffic. Um, it, because there's no sense in starting to pay for data feeder now when you don't have any traffic. Right, and that's that's important because I, one of the things you know that that I, I want to call out is that you definitely want to have other content there because Google is not going to give free traffic for data feed content. Um, they haven't done that for a while. If they if they did that, Joe would still be an affiliate. Um, but he's not. So essentially, Google decided a while back that you know duplicate content wasn't something that it was going to give ratings to. They know that this stuff comes from us, so they're going to give you know they're going to give fanatics the juice for it. They're not going to give it to affiliates. So what you want to be doing is using this as a supplement to what your con to what your um, your current strategy is. So like Terry, in your case, you guys are putting out content all the time around the Longhorns, but you can add you know, Longhorns shopping that is super convenient, super easy alongside your content. You know, Mark, same thing with you, where you've got a great domain on jerseys. You're aggregating content there. You're writing about jerseys. Well, now you can also add the shopping piece that makes it possible for people to get to the jerseys that they're looking for. Um, so this is 
totally, you know, this is like a plugin that goes above and beyond your existing um, content strategy. It shouldn't be a standalone because you're going to struggle to get, you know, to get free traffic. Uh, and regarding um, having some content, we always point Google, or point Google, point people to this page on Google's site about affiliate programs and kind of what a thin affiliate website is. Um, and so they defined, they said like, yeah, it's fine to have affiliate products on your site, but you do need to go through, you do need to have some unique content on there. So I do recommend for our customers to um, read this uh, page just so they know what they should be striving for and what they should avoid. Here's a really good example of one of our customers' websites. Um, they've been, I mean, they have an awesome website. And they These also guys have are podcasts awesome. and stuff, yeah. They're a partner um, of ours, actually. Oh, cool. Not integrated yet, but they're they're going to be doing some content stuff with us. Um, so so they have a data feeder store, and this is their store. It's just kind of big and tall clothes for men, and um, you can see they have the search search field categories. They've actually gone and set up some filters. So these are all like attribute filters. So shoot, um, I think so. Oh no, those are categories. Sorry. Here's their merchant filter, brand filter, and then they also have the price filter that they got to work on their site. <laughs> so this is a great looking website, but this is a great example of like, it's not just a shop. It's, you know, it's a, it's almost, it's like a, uh, it's a killer community site. I mean, these yeah, guys have been community. just killing it for 10 years, writing about a niche and they, they're, I mean, they own that. So, yeah. So that's what we would recommend. So like if you're looking at ROI, I would I would look at setting up that site or, or you know, like, or if you already have that WordPress website blog that has a lot of content and a lot of traffic, then a shop could supplement that pretty easily. Yeah, a lot has changed in the last 10 years because 10 years ago, you used to be able to stand up a site like this. And the Joe that you guys work with um, used to do this stuff. He used to write his own his own code for doing this, but he could get a domain and spin up a site that was data feed driven like this within minutes. And then, you know, Google was giving free traffic at the time. So if you got a good enough exact match domain, you could be rocking traffic the next day on really thin content that was all, you know, data feed driven. And that all came to a screeching halt, I think about eight years ago. So that being um, said, I, this is my site, Gear Grabber, and I set this up a number of years ago. Um, I don't really do anything to it. I don't write content. Um, it doesn't perform well in the summer months, but in the winter months, like it's not, it's not bad. Like there's some good sales on there. Nice. And so for this website, um, all of the products here are on sale. Like I set on the, the product set filter, like everything is on sale and some of them, everything's on sale 35% or more off. So, you know, I'm, huge into like the outdoors and so have like tents and um you know stuff like that um you can save a ton of money so i don't know like for me like i don't do anything to the site but you know it pays for itself for sure nice your results so just don't vary. rely just don't rely on, i would say just don't rely yeah. on it you know yeah, don't go into it thinking hey if i spin this site up it'll go because in all likelihood it probably won't but if you have an existing content strategy that you're working at you know day after day and putting quality content out there and have traffic because of it if you drop the shopping opportunities in around it and you can also you know once you have that all set up you can feed that with your social you know you can link people back to product pages and yeah, you know versus yeah. just you know creating and somebody had asked about that earlier does it work on social well it doesn't directly but you could certainly post people back to your pages on your site if you wanted to and i definitely recommend and you know people that are that are pure play social guys that's cool it's really cool until the free social platform decides they're going to start making money and so there's also a lot of people out there that used to do straight up you know wordpress or uh, facebook fan pages around a team and they went out and bought a bunch of likes and everything, and they were making great money while Facebook was still giving away free traffic. Then one day Facebook decided, hey, these guys are making money, why aren't we? And so they started gating that traffic and saying, hey, we're only gonna let like 2% of people see your posts if you don't pay us. And granted, Facebook advertising isn't bad. Um, it's pretty cheap and it's very targetable. 
but they definitely slowed people down to a halt because we had people that were doing well over a million dollars a year in sales just from Facebook pages that they set up and just pushing out product constantly until Facebook decided, hey, anytime you have an affiliate link in there, we're just not going to, we're not going to make it visible to that many people. Now the same guys actually have to go out and either have a better content strategy and a better engagement strategy on their Facebook pages and or they have to go and throw a few bucks behind every post they put out there to make sure people see it. So don't depend on free traffic sources. <laughs> very, very bad, very, very temporary. You know, it's all good until they decide they change the rules. And then, you know, it's remember that somebody, somebody said once that if the product is free, you're the product that what they weren't lying. Yep. Good. Awesome. Any other questions? I have one. Um, so, and this might just wait, this might be my, uh, inexperience or night nativity. So, like if there was a shopping comparison, let's just say with lids or with jerseys or whatever, it looks like there's multiple outlets or multiple companies that license, let's just say, NFL gear or college mm -hmm. gear or whatever, so that Fanatics is just one of them. There's three or five or 10 or 15 of them that have licensed those products. Right. Yeah, there's there's multiple players out there. I mean, I would say of the big brands right now, we're, and at least in the U.S., we're a lot of it. And sure. so, and especially around affiliate, I mean, we're, we're a lot of those brands, but you're going to find some outliers in there. Like you'll find like Dick's and Academy and stuff like that. They have affiliate programs, maybe East Bay, um, that also have, you know, licensed product. Um, so if you're working in those programs, you can have availability of that stuff in there as well. And you could certainly do the pricing comparison and let the, you know, let the shopper go where they will. Um, you know, which you also, also should pay attention to, you know, what are the, you know, what are the conversion rates of the sites that you're working with and what are the commission rates of the sites that you're working with? Oh, yeah. Um, to see who you, you know, yeah. yeah, to see who you want to go with. Because I mean, like, you know, you know, in a lot of cases, you know, not necessarily with licensed sports product, because Amazon's pretty weak there, but in a lot of cases, you know, Amazon has a lot of stuff, but they don't pay much. And so you need to kind of balance out your approach based on what kind of money it's bringing into you. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, let's just take a uh, hat, one of these, mm -hmm. one of these hats. Are, are you are you saying that that same hat, you know, is licensed across three different people, or does Fanatics have the only kind of hat, or or let's just say, right. uh, you know, Patriots said, here's our hat, and you three right. can sell it. Um, if you look at the stuff like like the New Era stuff. I mean, everybody's going to have, for the most part, everybody's going to have the new era, like uh, like NFL sideline hats and like stuff like that. It's kind of a commodity. Um, it is, it kind of is what it is. It's the official hat that the teams wear on the sidelines, and so everybody that sells licensed product is going to go out and buy that. You are going to see some sites like Lids occasionally is going to have some exclusive stuff because Lids was like a, a hat specialty store, and it's going to have some stuff that gets released on there occasionally that's exclusive to Lids. And so, you know, it's not, a, it's interesting for that reason, um, you know, but for the most part, you're going to find a lot of the same product is going to be across most merchants. Um, Fanatics branded, um, you know, that's our brand, but we also wholesale it. So you, chances are you might find that some other places too, uh, because we, you know, we sold it to them. They bought it wholesale, but, um, you know, um, there are going to be some, there might be some restrictions because like right now, um, like Amazon can't sell um, Nike. Nike and Amazon don't play nice at all. And so, um, you know, you won't find Nike there. You won't find the game day stuff there. But as far as like, you know, our brands go, um, you know, you're going to find the standard, you know, brands, Nike, Fanatics branded, um, Adidas, I mean, all that stuff. It's, it's going to be, you know, across, you know, most of the brands. They're, they're, it's, it's commoditized at this point. I'm with you. Yep. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Um, got about 13 minutes to go on the timeline. If anybody has any more questions, if they want to keep digging, Mark, are you seeing what I was uh, what I was telling you earlier? Does it make sense from our, our discussion earlier? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah, Mark called me earlier and told me what he was doing with his site, and I'm like, man, you need to come to this webinar later because we're going to be talking about exactly the stuff you're looking to do, man. Yeah, nice. great suggestion for sure. <laughs> He's got like what eJerseys.com. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it seems to me like having the Jersey shop on there makes some sense, right? Just a little bit. <laughs>
that time. Cool. Uh, if nobody has any questions, we will go ahead. And Emma, do you want to spin the wheel of fun? Yeah. And so uh, you can you can grab the screen. I, I do have something Oops, random sorry. to say, but go for it. it could probably wait. It's not okay. in this portion. So post post wheel of fun. Post wheel of fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. Let me share my screen um, and then we'll kick this off. Also, you'll have to excuse my browser. I know it's horrible. Big money, big money, big money, big money. <laughs> no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Yep. Stop. Oh, we got to get, we got it. That would be awesome to have that. Keep spinning, keep spinning. Oh, oh, Make that happen, Wade. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Benjamin. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a problem because I was just told I'm not supposed to have it because I don't have my site up yet. So I have to take myself out and give it to somebody who can use it efficiently. So I have no problems doing that. Please spin the wheel again. We can do that. Okay. Because I'm not there yet. Oh, look at that. So I told you you should come to the webinar. Oh yeah, thank you. There you go. <laughs> cool, congratulations. Congrats, Mark Rubin. Much appreciated. <laughs> awesome. That means I don't have to install cool. uh, WooCommerce right away. <laughs> you don't have to do it right now. <laughs> do you have Do you have another another uh, e-commerce plugin of preference? You know, I just I haven't set up a shop. I used to use um, the lazy person's method because you know my site doesn't get a, an inordinate amount of traffic. So um, I used to use whatever you know. If there, there there used to be certain code you could use, some JavaScript that you could yeah. you could make on the affiliate site and post something up there. Uh, I haven't seen that on Impact yet. It may be coming eventually, and that's fine. But no, I haven't. I'll be honest with you, Wade. The last time I do, I dove into WooCommerce and set it up because I was working for a company that used it, and I set it up on their site, and I got familiar with it. Um, I, I actually had some hacking going on and some other bad things, and I just don't have time for that junk. So uh, I got rid of my WooCommerce and um, and I haven't gone back to it yet. Not you know I'm not, again I'm not putting any, anything down. I'm sure there's lots of people that can use it and use it well. I just I just don't get the traffic right now to 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 uh, to you know um, go the ROI on it. You know to justify right. the ROI on it. Totally get it. Yep. Awesome. I have Hold a question. Up. Yeah. I have another question. Yeah. So is there a way to know? You know, like right now we use banner ads predominantly for uh -huh. sending traffic to, to fanatics. Okay. Is there a way to distinguish, hey, a banner ad versus something coming through? Eric, Congress? is there a setting to allow you to drop sub IDs in and stuff like that? Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, you can add a sub ID to all of your outgoing affiliate links. Okay, because you could see what's, what's working, what's not. Yeah, so you ahead. could say like, you can set it to WooCommerce, you know, set it as WooCommerce, or you can set it to whatever you want. Exit to store yeah, this or product is... or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever you want to put in there to differentiate it. Is it just one of the standard settings when you're when you're walking through the setup process? Yeah, so like it was the place where you saw me enter the, my Impact Affiliate ID, and right next to that, you could put in your sub ID. Okay, cool. Now that's that's. And I got to tell you, this is uh, good fantastic question. because. Uh, you know, I spend a lot of time with these banners, and you know, we don't know that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, <there's laughs> spend just, time on this. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy the amount of time. So this, you could just send them to the store, let them go window shop, and uh, and right. uh, keep them on your site, right? <laughs> So yeah, and the cool thing is, it's it, you know, is it it's easy to navigate to where people can dive into cat, you know, into categories, and because you know, you could since you're a single team guy, you could set mm -hmm. things up around you know, t-shirts, polos, hats, stuff like that, to, you know, men's, women's, to you know, get people into what they need, and so you may, if you make it easier for them to find the product, they can find what they want. They land with us already qualified because they've already identified what they want, and so that matter, it's just a matter of you know, checking out. And so you should have a higher conversion rate coming through on that. And you can play multiple sure. brand stuff too if you wanted. You could you could play you know fanatics and in, in the you know shop Texas sports and you could have all that you know people could you know buy according to whatever you know if they if they happen to find a better price on one of them you know so be it. Yeah, you know uh, I, I predominantly keep everyone to uh, 
uh, team shop, but right. there's sometimes there's things over on Fanatics. Plus, I've been wanting to introduce or get, uh, you know, we know that those, they're not just Texas fans. They like Cowboys yep. and all the other teams. And so, uh, plus we get traffic from around the country. So, you know, they're, yeah, they're, they're, pro, they're Longhorn fans, but they're also, you know, uh, you know, Charger fans and Patriot fans and whoever fans, right? So uh, yeah, yeah this is, that's where uh, that's where the fan thing. shops come in are kind of tricky because your conversion rate can be really good because people see that it's the official store of the team, but at the same time, you know, if you send somebody to Fanatics and they happen to be looking for a gift for somebody who's right. a Patriots fan too, you get you get both of them. So right, yeah, right. I t I'm I'm a big fan of testing. So you know, try stuff Absolutely. out, and see what yeah. works better, and you know, send the traffic to what works best. Absolutely. Any other questions? Got one? Go for it. Okay. Thank you. So, it's perfect that you said you're a big fan of testing, and I will keep this very short. Okay. Um, I, ha uh, I have some affiliations with the South Bay Lakers and some coaching staff there. We'd like to head out to Vegas in the next week or so, um, put together an exposure camp. I was thinking about filming it and creating our own NFTs. I'm not sure how that would benefit you as far as feedback or anything, but I have the same process in mind for Lucha Libre. And um, I just want to let you know that I think this digital push is going to be huge and we're going to start recording and editing and doing some high quality stuff. So if there's any way um, anything comes around about these digit, this crossover from like cards to digital or everything mm -hmm. to digital, um, we definitely want to be on the beta team and we'll throw you some different stuff and it won't be nine or don't worry. We're big Laker fans too. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that because I would not be surprised to see more of the NFT stuff starting to come out through the memorabilia brands. So, you know, um, I think it's, it's definitely something that's coming and it's, you know, it's here. It's just a matter of when, when we choose to, to get involved. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And congratulations on the 300 million, by the way. It's fantastic. That, that, that yeah. blew me away. That totally blew me away because it's funny because when they, they raised the last round, they were like, yeah, we're, we're not we're not doing any more. And then they came out and announced that they brought another 300 million. And apparently the investors came to us this time. So we didn't really go looking. But I was going to I was going to ask you to send me a Bosa jersey. <laughs> no, you guys maybe throw us a bone. <laughs> you need to come, Wade. You need to come down to Disney and give me a holler, and we'll come down. That's and, right. And do some drinking. There you go. Uh, that's not too. It's two hours away from me. It's not bad. Either Disney. You're covered at either Disney. I'm, I'm I guess they're they're ten. finally open in California now, right? Are they opening soon? Yeah, we've been there twice already. Actually, it's not nice. even that busy. Nice. Yeah, I went down right after, not too far after they opened up, um, you know, Disney in Florida. And I was right when it was starting to pick back up again. And the first day we were, were there, we went to uh, Magic Kingdom and got around and rode pretty much everything we wanted. And then we went to um, Hollywood Studios the next day. I got boarding group 10 for Rise of the Resistance. So my wife and I knocked that out at like 930 in the morning and then left because everything else was starting to pile up. So we got what Don't we wanted. Don't ruin it, but is it amazing? Oh, it's, yeah, it's it's worth every bit of weight you could do for it. Okay. It's nuts. Okay, it's, thank you. It's like being in the movie. It's not it's not a ride. It's a, it's a whole experience. So. Wow. But uh, anyway, cool. Well, thanks to everybody who showed up. Thanks to Eric yeah, for, for coming in and showing off some cool yeah, tools. Thank you, and, Eric. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and if, if anyone has questions, just uh, you can find Hi, everyone. Me, fire me an email. It's at help at datafeeder.com. So if you still have any questions, we're here. Awesome. But yeah, and thanks and... Thanks so much for coming by and Wade giving us the opportunity to yeah. talk about David. Yeah. Congrats to Mark who won three free months. So, yeah, but if anybody else yeah, wants great, to pick Mark. it up, Fanatics 30 is the code and yeah. um, you'll save 30%. Yeah, so uh, Mark, if you can just uh, shoot us an email, help at datafeeder.com. So that's D-A-T-A-F-E-E-D-R.com. Then we'll get you going. Will do. Thank and you. And you don't have to use it right away. Like you could, if you want to wait a, a month or so to sign up, no problem. Great. I'll probably have some questions. So I'll reach out to you. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Good seeing everybody. All right. Have a great All right. Thanks, Wade. Everybody. Bye, Bye Emma. Bye.